out of his grace. I will be, by the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the online community. We're so glad to have all of you connected to the service. And we want to welcome the entire Bomb State community connected to the service tonight by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Bomb, You New York FM, Heritage FM, Inspiration FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service. Hey guys, do me a favor. Call a friend, a family, a loved one. One, call somebody whom you really love especially people who are sick even if they're in the hospitals or you know people that are on admission in the hospitals try and get them to tune to this radio station right now tonight is a harvest of miracles healing signs and wonders it's amazing the kind of testimonies we started having from yesterday in the services i tell you but by emails and phone calls you don't want to stay out of tonight's service so get somebody connected to the service and if you're around a quiet bone where you can quickly get to 98 Waniba Road, Uyo Akwaibom State. We'll be glad to pray and minister to you in the course of this service physically right here at the building. All right, social media community, do me the same favor. Reach out to some people you know who are believing for healing, who are sick or whom the devil has been taking advantage of. Get them to connect to the service. Share the video on your page. Tag some people. Put the videos on monogram, telegram, and WhatsApp groups. We're going to have an exciting time. And I thank you for helping me to get the gospel to the ends of the earth. All our campuses and our centers. We want to welcome every one of you to the service. And get ready. It's going to be an exciting adventure in the word of his grace. All right? Fasten your seatbelts. Grab your pen, your notebook, and your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight. As we look into the scriptures in harvest of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. Mm -mm -mm. All the stories in the Gospels, I mean the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are not for reading. The Word of God is to be believed. The Word of God is to be believed. So, when I read them, the Bible, I am not reading a testimony. When I read them, the four Gospels, I am not reading, I am reading the Word of God in a story. I am reading the word of God in a story. I am reading the power of God in a story. I am reading Jesus Christ in a story. In Matthew chapter 8, there is a story of a man called the centurion who had a servant. And in the course of this teaching within the week, we will examine how to use your faith for other people. How to use your faith for other people, especially in receiving from the Lord. In the story of this centurion, you, Jesus was asked by the centurion to heal his servant. Let's read it together, Matthew chapter 8, verse number 7. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 7. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Next verse. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Then he gives us a narrative I'd like you to pay attention to in Matthew chapter 8 verse number 9. The narrative, Matthew 8, 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Next verse. <clears throat> when Jesus heard it, he marveled. That's Jesus' response. He marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no not in Israel. 
Now, the reason why he said, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel, is because this centurion was not a Jew. So Jesus, he said, among all the Jews, including the disciples that were with him, he was saying, I have not seen this kind of faith, not even among my disciples that are with me in Israel. That is to say, the centurion operated a dimension of faith that was not usual among the Jews. What did the centurion say? Pay attention. He said something you and I need to know. He said, I am coming. He said, come to my house. And Jesus said, I will come to your house. Then the centurion answered and said, don't come to my house. My house is not worthy to accommodate you. Why did the centurion ask Jesus to come to his house? <laughs> because Acts chapter 10 verse 38 tells us how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about. Who went about. So it was normal for Jesus to go about and it was normal for Jesus to come to the house of the centurion. So when Jesus said, I will come to your house. It was usual because he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So Jesus healing the sick was a sign of the anointing upon him. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So Jesus said... I will come to your house. Now, there's something he drives here. Because if your pastor is there, even if your pastor visits you at home, even if your pastor comes to the hospital, what will his physical presence accomplish? What will he do? Even if he were to stand by your bedside, or he was to walk into the world where you're on admission, or if he was to come to your house, what will he do? He, he will just show up. But the man said, speak the word only. Speak the word only and thy servant shall be healed. The man knew that words transmit the healing power of God. Words transmit the healing power of God. Because words are conveyors of God's power. Words are conveyors of of God's power. Alright? The man knew that. That those words will travel anywhere in the world and deliver the power of God there. There is no restriction to how far words can go because words are spirits. So, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. The man knows that a man invests his authority in his words. A man invests his authority in his words. That is, whatever authority a man has will be the authority of his words. W-O-R-D-S. Words. Then he says, I am a man under authority. I am a man under authority. Matthew 8, 9. I am a man, put it up for me, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go. And he goeth. And to another, come. And he cometh. And to my servant, do this. And he doeth it. Now, he is not a Jew, but he knows people in authority Use authority by words. People in authority use authority by words. All right? Now, so he says, I say to one, go. In other words, people in authority need not to be physically present before they are obeyed. People in authority don't have to be physically present before they are obeyed. A man in authority can stay in America and call the, his office on phone and say do one, two, three, four and report back. 
and everybody will start running around as if the man was physically there because words convey authority. A man's authority is expressed in his words. Their words carry their authority because if Jesus were to come into his house, he will still have to speak to the sickness. Before the sickness will obey, he will still have to speak words. So instead of bothering yourself to come, since your words can get to where I am, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He didn't say speak the word only. Probably he spoke the end result. You speak the word only. This will be the outcome. My servant shall be healed. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be whole. She spoke the end result. In the operation of faith, we speak the end result. I know my servant shall be whole. I know my servant shall be whole. You speak the word only. <clears throat> That's a huge lesson there. A man's words carry his authority. Notice in Matthew chapter 8 verse 13. Matthew chapter 8 verse number 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. As, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour as thou hast believed as you have believed we said it's not like God moves around when he is tired then people stop getting healed it's not as if God carries healing power around and be distributing then when he gets tired he'll say today's portion is over Come back tomorrow. No. God never gets tired. He never gets tired. The healing power of God is always available and more than enough for anybody who will believe and receive. People release their faith. Because it is done unto you according to your faith or as you have believed. The power of God flows in the direction of our belief. Remember, Jesus wanted to come to his house. He, by his faith, gave direction to the power of God. The centurion, by his faith, gave direction to the power of God. <clears throat> Just like in Mark chapter 5. They were wondering, what do you mean by who touched your clothes? Everybody is touching you. If God could just force things on people, right now there will be nobody unsaved on earth. If God was forcing things on people, everybody would be born again right now. Because that is his will. But why is everybody not born again? Because God doesn't force things on people. He's not a tyrant. He's a loving father. Huh. So if salvation, which is major in the heart of God, which is eternal in God's program, is not forced on people, is it healing which is temporal? The healing of the body is temporal. Because at the end of the day, if Jesus tarries his coming, that body will still die or sleep. But salvation is eternal. Yet, it is not forced on people. God never forces his healing power on anybody. People will have to hear that God is a healer, believe and release their faith in God's healing. Are we in the building here? Yeah. God never forces it on people. No, people must, must make demand on God's power. Your faith, your doubt, your unbelief will give direction to the power of God. Your faith, your doubt, your unbelief will give direction to the power of God. Please stay with me. Someone said, 
after my prayer, after my fasting, God has still not done it. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Somebody said, after my prayer, after my fasting, God has still not done it. That is how you know that that person was not in faith. Because a man in faith will never conclude that God has not done it. Because even before the prayer, he will have spoken the end result. You speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He didn't say speak the word only may be my servant. No, 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 no. No probability in the operation of faith. So your doubt, your unbelief or your faith will give direction to God's power. The man said, speak the word only. And Jesus said, this is great faith. You will get it according as you have believed. Be it done unto you. What did the man believe? Speak the word only. That's what the man believed. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. That is what the man believed. That if only you can speak, that's all that is required for the healing of my servant. Psalm 107 verse 20. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 107 verse number 20. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word and the word healed them. Not a probability. Of a certainty when God's word is sent, it heals. Except the word is not taught. Except the word is not preached. Once the word is rightly preached, soundly taught, it goes forth and never comes back void until it accomplishes God's design. Speak the word only. He sent his word. His word healed them. And his word delivered them from all their destructions. Key word. He sent his word. He sent his word. In other words, the word of God will do what the power of God does. The word of God will do what the power of God does. Let me repeat. The word of God will do what the power of God does. According as you have believed, so is done unto you. I mean, remember, two people in Kadesh Barnea believed the word of God in the midst of three million. Three million people died, only two believed. And the two that believed entered the promised land. So it's not how many people are believing that gets the power to walk. One person out of an entire crowd can believe the word of God and get what the word of God promises. So it's not in the crowd. It's not in the population. One man's faith can make all the difference. One man's faith. You don't have to believe because somebody believed. You believe because you believe the word of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody getting blessed tonight? <clears throat> In the same chapter, Matthew chapter 8 verse 14. Matthew chapter 8 verse number 14. Pay attention. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. Next verse. And he touched her hand. He touched her hand. He touched her hand. Why? Because God's power is tangible and can be transferred. He touched her hand. She was sick of a fever and Jesus touched her hand. Put that scripture up again for me. And the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. The fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. Notice verse 16 of the same chapter, Matthew the 8th chapter, the 16th verse. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, with his word, and heal all 
that were sick and healed all, not some, healed all that were sick. In other words, Jesus kept using his words. He cast out the devils with his word. That is, Jesus kept using his word. Speak the word only. He sent his word. He cast out the devils with his word. Speak the word only. How did they get healed? Because they believed what he said. Faith has an action. Anywhere you find faith, you will find the action of faith. According as you have believed. What should the person believe? It's done. It's done. I have heard the word. I believe the word. I receive the word. It is done. And if it is done, what do you do? Do what people do who are healed. Do what people do who are healed. Kenneth Hagin told the story. I love Kenneth Hagin. I listen to him a lot. Kenneth E. Hagin told the story of how he, his son, Kenneth Pastor, Pastor Hagin now, I don't want to call him Junior. He used to be called Junior. But we call him Pastor Hagin now because I think he's in his 80s or 70s or so. So, you know, Pastor Hagin said at the age of 14, he was sick. So the father took him to the hospital and the doctor said to the father, your son, the next time water touches his ear, inside his ear, he will go deaf. So whatever you do, you must make sure water never gets into his ear because he will get deaf. So they left the hospital and got in the car. And Pastor Hagin said to Kenneth Hagin, Dad, what did the doctor say? He said, you were there with me. We had the doctor together. That you don't let water get into your ears. Otherwise, you will be deaf. He said, Dad, can't God heal me? He said, well, you've had me preach all the time. And if you want healing, you can have it right now. He said, Dad, I believe in God's power and I believe I am healed right now. Huh. 14 years old. I believe he has not heard stories of people who believe and didn't get healed. All he knows is if you can believe, you'll be healed. So he said simply, I believe in God's power. Right now, I believe I am healed. So the father said to him, what do people who get healed do? He said, Dad, as soon as we arrive home, I'm jumping into the swimming pool. The boy got out of the car, ran into the pool and sw swam his way. In that pool, the guy is 80-something now. He has never been deaf one time. Why? He believed. And when he believed, he released his faith. And his faith got him what he desired. God is not keeping miracles from you. God is not keeping healing from you. God wants you to have it. God doesn't need a miracle. God doesn't need healing. All the miracles and healings that God has made available in his world are for you so you can have it when you need it. He's not keeping it. That's why his power is available and you can withdraw that power whenever you need it and direct it to any situation. And listen carefully. Your faith will direct the, the direction of God's power or your doubt and unbelief will give the power of God direction. You determine which way you want to function. It is not up to God that you are healed. It is up to you that you are healed. God has finished with his part and has made his power available through the teaching of his word because the gospel is the power of God. So once the word of God is being preached, the power of God is made available for anybody who wants to take delivery of anything that God's power is capable of creating. Are we in the building here? Yeah. Nobody is keeping it from you. Except you choose not to take it. Except you choose not to take it. Speak.
speak the word only. And you know, sometimes believers, we say neutral things. Things that don't make sense. You hear believers say things like, I know Satan will not have the last laugh. What are you saying? It's a neutral statement. It doesn't mean anything. What God cannot do does not exist. What are you saying? It doesn't make, it doesn't have any spiritual value. Statements like, God will not shame us. What are you talking about? Is it God that shames people? Somebody speaking like that doesn't even know God. Those are things unbelievers say. Believers can be saying things like that. Those are neutral statements. They have no spiritual weight. They have no spiritual value. A believer must speak things that are specific and in alignment with the authority of God's word. Faith, the affirmations of faith are very direct. The affirmations of faith are very direct. In Matthew chapter 17 verse 19. Matthew chapter 17 verse number 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said... Why could not we cast him out? We know the story. They brought someone to Jesus and his disciples. <laughs> and the disciples could not heal the person. So they brought the person to Jesus. And then the disciples, after Jesus healed the person, they now asked Jesus, why couldn't we heal the person? Look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. The answer of Jesus to them. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Now remember, he is talking about sickness and disease. Look at that verse 20 again. Pay attention. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place. And it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Jesus is talking about sickness and disease. You shall say unto it. He didn't say you shall describe it. You shall talk to it. And you will direct the power of God to relocate it. Via words. Be thou removed. Migraine, liver disease, high blood pressure, be thou removed from this body now. Out. You say to this specific, to this, not you say to, no, say to this mountain, remove from hands to yonder place, it shall obey you. And nothing shall be impossible. Are we in the building tonight? Yeah. You shall say. You shall have. You shall say. You shall have. What you say. Please pay attention. You will say. Now, if you look at the healing ministry of Jesus, it functioned by what he said. The healing ministry of Jesus functioned by what he said or what the beneficiary said. It functioned either by what Jesus said or what the beneficiary said. Pay attention, please. <clears throat> he said, you will say... To this mountain. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. He went about doing good. Everywhere he was. The power of God was there. But men had to release their faith to receive it. Men 
had to release their faith to receive God's power. <clears throat> Are you still here? Luke chapter 5 verse 17. Pay attention. Uh, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. What am I doing right now? Teaching. As he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. As he was teaching the power was present. As I am teaching right now the power is present to heal to deliver, to perform miracles, both creative, curative, miracles of provision, miracles of preservation, miracles of restoration. The power is available for whatever you want the power to do. You direct the power and the power will do what you want it to do in your body, in your circumstances, in your situation, in your marriage, in your home, in your family, on your job. What I know is as I teach, the power is available. You direct the power where you want the power to function. He was teaching because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. He was teaching and the power of the Lord was present. Allergies are getting healed as I'm speaking right now. Somebody with allergies just got healed. As I'm speaking right now, somebody with allergies just got healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The power was present to heal. But the people that were there did not receive. You see? They did not receive because they were fault finding. They were there with a critical spirit. They were not there to receive. They were there to find fault. Even though among them we are sick people, but they couldn't receive. Yet they were asking all kinds of questions. Even though the power was present, but the guys were filled with unbelief. Faith. Ayataba. Listen carefully. Huh. Somebody said, oh, play the keyboard. So we can have an anointed atmosphere. Music is not what creates the atmosphere. Somebody said, oh, let's look for a very quiet place. I have healed people on the road. I have healed people on the road. Kneel them down on the road. Minister to them right there on the street. And they got healed. The environment does not determine the flow of power. Yeah. The environment doesn't determine it. Uh, what are you talking about? Listen carefully, everybody. If you are writing, write this. Faith is what gives an atmosphere to the power of God. Faith is what gives an atmosphere to the power of God. Do you notice that even when the guy was getting healed, the guy that was brought in, you know the story, right? In Luke chapter 5, Jesus was teaching the power of the Lord was present and nobody was getting healed. His friends went home. His friends went home. Took him on a stretcher. Brought him up the roof. Tore the roof. Dropped him in the building before Jesus. And Jesus said, man. <laughs> I love Jesus. Man, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees started murmuring. Who is he to forgive sins? How can he be forgiving sins? Who can forgive sins but God Almighty? And Jesus said to them, what reason is in your hearts? What are you guys reasoning in your hearts? Whether it's easier to forgive sins or to heal. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power not only to forgive sins but to heal. And not only forgive this man his sins, but I command you to stand up, take your mat and go. And the man stood up, took his mat and went. Which is easier? To forgive or to heal. <laughs> uh, forgiveness is much more weightier than healing. Because forgiveness is eternal. So if I could forgive him his sins, it's an indication that I will heal his body. 
If I could forgive him his sins, it's an indication that I will heal his body. Now, <clears throat> there can't be inaction in faith. Faith is an action. Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, what, how did he see their faith? The action of opening the roof and dropping the man was faith expressed. Faith expressed. He saw their faith. Because faith cannot be inactive. Remember, the power of God was present to heal. Yet, the people in there didn't want the power of God. They were religious people. Whom you would think gathered because they wanted the power. But they were not interested in the power. They were looking for how to create loopholes in what Jesus was teaching. And because that's what brought them, they went empty. Went empty and hungry. <laughs> you know, Matthew 9.29. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 9 verse 29. Then touched he their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. The blind man. According to your faith, not according to my faith, according to your own faith, be it unto you. Two guys, blind men, came to Jesus. Look at verse 27 of Matthew 9. Let's get a little bit of the narrative. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. 28. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes. You remember Peter's mother-in-law? He touched her hands. So there is the place of the laying on of hands. When we lay hands on sick people, we help them release their faith. The laying of hands is to help you release your faith so you can receive. When hands are laid on you, there is a transmission of the tangible anointing. There is a transfer of the tangible power of God. Jesus touched their eyes. Put that scripture up again. Jesus touched their eyes saying as he touched the eyes he said at the same time he was touching according to your faith be it unto you. And because their faith was released when he spoke they took delivery and their eyes were opened. Give me the next verse. The next verse. <clears throat> and their eyes were opened. Blind men. And Jesus straightly charged them saying, see that no man know it. This is not a showmanship. We are not here to advertise miracles. We are here to reveal Christ. So, shh, go, don't tell anybody about it. <laughs> it's not for display. It's not for social media. Social media demonstration. No, no. Shh, you're here, two of you. Go, don't tell anybody about it. Why? Because this is the goodness of God. This is God being good to people. It's not for uh, showmanship. No, no, no. Tell nobody about it. I love Jesus. Oh, yes. I love Jesus. He touched their eyes. And as he was touching, he spoke words. Because the power of God is directed by what? He spoke words. Be it unto you. According to your faith. And because their faith was to receive. The moment he spoke. They received. Their eyes were opened. They received. Their eyes were opened. No matter how blind the eyes. The power of God does not know the age of a disease. And the power of God does not recognize. The chronic nature of the disease. The power of God does not recognize. The extent of damage. The same power. That will open blind eyes will reconstruct liver, kidney. It will reconstruct spinal cord. The same power. The same. You don't, need, you don't need to be looking for extra. When the power moves in, the power has the capacity to fix everything back. 
Immediately their eyes were open. Jesus said to them, Shh, as you go, don't talk about it. It's not for sure. <laughs> don't tell anybody about it. According to your faith, be it unto you. It's consistent. According to what you believe. How did Jesus know faith? By what they said. By what they said. Faith and doubt are located in what you say. Faith and doubt are located in what you say. You can speak very religiously and what you said is doubt. In Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood said, If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. She was definite. She was specific. And she was intentional about what she said. Two things happen in Mark 5. 25 to 34. Mark 5, 25 to 34. The woman said, if I can but touch his clothes. She said, the second thing is, she touched his clothes. First of all, she gave direction to the power. Then secondly, she received of the power. She spoke, she touched. She spoke, she touched. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I shall be whole. I know I shall be whole. She spoke the end result, then she acted on it, she touched, and immediately the blood stopped. Immediately. Why? She directed the power with her words, and she took delivery with her touch. She spoke words, and she acted on what she said. And you shall have what you say. <clears throat> she touched his clothes. She was healed. And Jesus found out later. <laughs> and he asked. What happened? She told Jesus all that had happened. <laughs> From the doctor's report. To the appointment she has kept. How she was sick and all that happened. She's how she said if I can but touch his garments. I shall be healed. Jesus didn't initiate her healing. She initiated her healing. Somebody says, if God wants me to be well, he will heal me. <laughs> You'll be there till the trumpet sounds. You've got to initiate your healing. Because you already know in black and white, it is the will of God to heal all the time. It is the will of God to heal sickness and disease all the time. So anytime you need it, you initiate it. Anytime. Anytime you need healing. Anytime you need a miracle. You initiate it. <clears throat> you initiate it. The key thing is. As soon as she told that story. Jesus was going to Jairus' house. <laughs> Before this woman. Directed God's power from Jairus' house to herself. You can redirect the position or you can redirect the direction of God's power. Jesus was carrying the anointing to the house of Jairus. This woman came from behind. She came from behind and she redirected the power from going forward to return back to her. And the power came back. Faith directs the power. And the Bible says, Jesus stopped and said, no, 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 somebody touched me. And they said, how do you know that somebody touched you? He said, virtue has left me. Somebody withdrew power and I knew when it left. The tangibility of God's power. Somebody withdrew it and I knew when it moved out of my body to the person's body. When people are receptive to ministration, the minister will know it. And when people are not receptive, the minister will also know it. Because when you release God's power, those that are receptive, the power flows to them. Those that are not receptive, the power will bounce back. And you will know that something is pushing the power back. I mean, you know, we, 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 we know what we're talking about. Because it's like electricity. 
The power of God is like electricity. You will know when it flows. Especially if you're the minister ministering that power. All right? <clears throat> now, are you still in the building? As she was saying to Jesus what had happened, they came and told Jairus, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master any further. <laughs> now, when Jesus had that, <laughs> when Jesus had how the woman initiated it, Jesus turned to Jairus and said, fear not, only believe. Why? Because Jairus has a part to play in the power healing his daughter. And once he gets into fear, he makes it impossible for the healing power to operate in that environment. That's why everywhere the angels appeared with a message from God, the first thing they said is fear not. Because fear contaminates the environment and makes the environment unconducive for the flow of God's power. Fear, doubt, unbelief, they are all working together in the ministry of obstructing the power of God from the recipient. Fear not, only believe. In other words, fear is a product of things we hear. Fear is a product of things we hear. Yeah. Fear is a product of things we hear. We have a society that is crippled with fear. Fear is a product of what we hear and read. Fear is a product of what we hear and read. We are in an information age and we have all sorts out there. That's why Proverbs says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the influences or the forces or the issues of life. Out of it are the forces of life. As soon as he said that, Jesus knew what the words, words could do. Irrespective of the fact that Jesus was there. Irrespective of the fact that the power of God was present. As long as fear is present, nothing is going to happen. As long as fear is present, nothing is going to happen. <laughs> you know, that is why when they came to Jairus' house, some people were in the house crying. You know those professional mourners? They were crying and weeping and wailing. And when Jesus came in and said, that your daughter shall leave, they started laughing. Can you imagine somebody crying, suddenly laughing? It means the cry was not a real cry. They started laughing. And Jesus ordered them out of the room. Because they were pollutants of the atmosphere. He ordered them out. And when all of them went out, the atmosphere was free now for faith to operate. You cannot tolerate fear. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Yeah. You don't tolerate fear. Get rid of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Fear is not of God. So when you admit fear, you hinder God from operating. Because fear and faith do not co coexist. They do not work hand in hand. Yeah. Once fear is present, faith is not permitted to function in that environment. So, if you want faith to function, get rid of fear. Any form of fear, get rid of it. And how do you get rid of fear? By receiving faith-filled words. By receiving the ministry of the word of God, which is coming to you right now. You receive the ministry of God's word. You believe God's word. You saturate yourself with God's word until fear does not exist anymore. Fear not. The, the word of God fills you up. And the word of God is faith filled. <clears throat> the word of God is faith filled. Only believe. Only believe. Jesus knew Jairus had a call. And he said to him, fear not. 
Fear not. Only believe. Because words always paint images. Words always paint images. Or words transmit images. Only believe. Meaning he had something to do. See, you don't paralyze words with thoughts. You paralyze words with words. When Satan says, you will not be healed from this disease. You open your mouth and say, the power of God is already at work in me. Healing is mine right now. Healing belongs to me right now. Healing is mine right now. The power of God is working in my body. When you speak those words, you render the words of doubt and fear and unbelief impotent. You don't keep quiet when the devil is talking. You talk louder and make sure you speak last. Make sure you have the final say. Make sure you're the one who spoke last. You can only paralyze words with words. Release your faith. Say something filled with the faith of God. Say something filled with the faithfulness of God. Say something filled with the power of God. Respond immediately to negative words. Immediately. Don't waste time. When words are spoken to you or spoken over you that are not faith words, open your mouth and counter them. So, if it was at all what God will do, Jesus will have told Jairus, no shaking, no shaking, no shaking. You will see my power. Be afraid if you want. Be full of fear if you want. All of your fear cannot stop me. Jairus, you will see something today. No, it was not all up to Jesus. That's why Jesus said, fear not. Only believe because ultimately, no matter how much I release the power, you will have to receive it. And if there is fear in you, you can't receive of my power. So it's not all up to Jesus. The recipient has a part to play in releasing his faith and receiving. And when you have received it, you act. Faith acts. You do what people who are healed do. You do what people who are healed do. Are we in the building? <clears throat> you do what people who are healed do. So, it's not up to Jesus. It's up to you. Whether you are healed or whether you are not healed is up to you. Jesus has finished his part. Say with me very loud, I am a believer. God is the doer. I am the believer. I am the receiver of what God has done. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Believers don't get the power to walk. Believers believe the power will walk. Believers don't get the power to walk. Believers believe that the power will walk. God is the performer. I am the believer. It's like hands are laid on you and then you get home and the pain increases. <laughs> hands are laid on you and then when you get home, the situation gets worse. Fear not. Doubt, fear, unbelief will die unborn until they are spoken. Fear, doubt, unbelief will die unborn unless they are spoken. So that fear that you don't want to happen, don't speak it. Refuse to give voice. Refuse to give voice to the suggestions of the devil. Refuse to give voice to the suggestions of the devil in your mind. And as long as you do not verbalize what the devil is suggesting, it dies unborn. It dies unborn. It dies unborn. Learn not to verbalize fear. Don't put fear in words. As long as it stays in your mind, it stays in your mind as a temptation. That is why you must speak words and paralyze that thought and flush it out. The more you speak, the more evil thoughts are 
put out of your mind. When fear is trying to come and you open your mouth and start speaking, suddenly boldness comes. Boldness comes. It is only when you are quiet and the thoughts of fear begin to come and you stay quiet, then you get overtaken. But if you open your mouth and you start speaking, suddenly the fear is gone. Why? Fear cannot withstand words that are filled with faith. Fear cannot withstand words that are filled with faith or faith-filled words. Don't rehearse what fear or unbelief is saying. Don't rehearse it. Don't meditate on what fear and unbelief is saying. Matthew 6, 31. Take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. Anxiety is in words. If you want to know if a man is anxious, hear what he says. But listen, when it is still in your mind, not yet verbalized, it is still a test or temptation. So, learn to renew your mind often. Learn to renew your mind often by saying to your mind what God's word says. Say with me very loud, everybody. I am a doer of the word. Say it very loud. I do the word. Say it again. I do the word. Can I have a powerful amen? Isaiah 54, 17. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon, Isaiah 54, 17. 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He was talking about fearful thoughts. That is, when fearful thoughts come into your mind, be not afraid. In other words, it's something you're going to talk about. So, you condemn them. You condemn those thoughts. The devil tells you you will end up in a wheelchair. No, <laughs> no. I am strong, healthy, and hale all the days of my life. My body is strong, and I will walk the face of this earth fulfilling the purpose of God for my life. I'm not on earth as an accident. I am here to fulfill a divine design, and all that I need to fulfill my purpose is on my inside. The exceeding greatness of his power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead is on my inside. There is a working, there is an energy according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ and that power is on my inside. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead is on my inside. What could not defeat Christ in the grave cannot defeat me because that same power is at work in my body to force seven. While you are talking, that thought has this appeared long ago. That thought vanishes. While you're talking God's word, you say what God says. You speak faith-filled words. You speak faith-filled words. Charge the atmosphere with faith-filled words. Create an atmosphere of miracles by speaking faith-filled words. Create an atmosphere of supernatural provision by walking around your office and speaking faith-filled words. In the morning, walk into that office. The first 30 minutes to one hour, speak faith-filled words. Create an environment where miracles are natural by speaking faith-filled words. Speak faith-filled words. Fill your room with faith-filled words. Faith-filled words. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. Salvation is a miracle. Righteousness is a miracle. Holiness is a miracle. Sonship is a miracle. I'm a son of God. I am a product of God's miracle. I am righteous. It's a miracle. I am holy. It's a miracle. I'm a son of God. It's a miracle. I am regenerated. It's a miracle. I am born again. It's a miracle. I am a miracle on the go. 
Miracles are not new to me. Miracles are not strange to me. Miracles are not new to me. Miracles are not strange to me. I am a bundle of miracles walking the face of the earth. So anytime I need it, miracles are available to me. You speak faith with filled words. You speak faith filled words. And you shall have what you say. So speak faith filled words. Fill the atmosphere with faith-filled words. Yeah. <laughs> Fill the atmosphere with faith-filled words. Jatolaba. 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 Talk as thoughts come. Don't verbalize fearful thoughts. Don't verbalize doubtful thoughts. You know why? Words are vital. Words are vital. Don't mind people who say talk is cheap. Talk created the world. It can be cheap. Words are vital. If you believe that everything you say comes to pass, listen, how will you behave if everything you say happens? Will you speak carelessly? When you know that everything you say happens, you won't call your child monkey because a monkey will appear. Yes? You won't call your child dog. He will start barking. So if what you were to say will come to pass and you knew it, you will not talk carelessly. Now let me shock you. Everything you say will come to pass. You shall have what you say. Don't play and say I was playing. Because every idle word you speak, you will give account of it. That's how serious words are. There's no careless word. There's no careless word. Words rule the spirit realm. Words, they rule the spirit realm. Whether negative or positive. That's why people who visit native doctors, the first thing native doctors do is to talk. Because words rule the spirit realm, whether negative or positive. Whether negative or positive. So don't be careless with what you say. If you don't mean it, don't say it. If you're playing, don't utter it. Only speak when you mean it. Only speak when you're serious about it. And people think words are just ordinary. Let's start with some basics. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. Mm -mm -mm. Are you still in the building? Romans chapter 10 verse 8. Romans chapter 10. Who is on that computer typing what? I don't understand. Are you in this service at all? Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy heart, mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Next verse. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Look at the next verse. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, verse 14. <clears throat> Romans 10, 14. Pay attention. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Next verse. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad, glad tidings of good things. That means that salvation or getting born again, which is the most important thing that happens to you in your life, was because somebody spoke. Somebody spoke. How can they believe on whom they have not heard? So somebody spoke, you heard, you believed, and the greatest thing in life happened to you called salvation. That is how powerful words are. 
That is how powerful words are. Somebody spoke. You heard him. You believe it. Somebody preached the gospel to you. You thought it was simple words. But brother Paul calls that the demonstration of the spirit. Which is the power of God. He calls it a demonstration. I'm talking about that moment. You had the gospel. And you said I believe it. Eternal life was imparted into you. God's nature. God himself took up precedence. Huh. The Bible says what just happened is a demonstration of the power of God. In Acts chapter 5 verse 20. Look at it. Acts chapter 5 verse number 20. Mm -mm -mm. Go stand and speak in the temple to the people. All the words of this life. All the words of this life. Where the angel said to Peter, go and speak the word of life. So life is in words. Life is in words. In Acts 10, 22. Acts chapter 10, verse 22. Mm -mm. And they said, Cornelius... The centurion, a just man, and one that feared God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words, to hear words, W-O-R-D-S of thee. Look at verse 44. Verse 44 of the same chapter. <clears throat> While Peter yet spake these words, he only spoke words. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which had the world. Which had the world. What did the angel say to Cornelius? He will tell you words. Whereby you shall be saved. Acts eleven fourteen. Acts chapter 11 verse 14. Who shall tell the words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. Who shall tell the words? Words. That means words are powerful. Words impart eternal life. So if words impart eternal life, how much less healing? Words. Be healed. Amen. You do what healed people do. Words. W-O-R-D-S. You know, Paul said, if I came in the excellency of speech, he said, your faith will stand in the wisdom of men and not in the power of God. Which means, wrong doctrine can send people to hell. Wrong doctrine can send people to hell. So that means, words are powerful. What edifies the church? First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 3. What edifies the church? But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. What is prophecy? Speaking. So words build up. Words build up. Look at James chapter 3 verse 1. What did brother James say about words? James 3 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Next verse. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. So if a man can control what he says, he can control his body. As small as the tongue is, it gives direction to the body. Just like the steering of a trailer, very small steering controls the entire trailer. Just like the steering of a ship, a ship that is carrying, let's say, 1,000 people and carrying cars, football field, swimming pool, carrying all kinds of things. Yet, the control is a small steering. Your entire body is controlled by your tongue. Watch what you say. 
You are what you are today because of what you said yesterday. And if you don't like where you are, change what you are saying and it will change the course of your life. It will change the course of your life. You stand up and say, this is my high blood pressure. This is my high blood pressure. Even if it was not high blood pressure, you create it by your words. 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 That's why Brother James says in that James chapter 3, Behold, we put bits in horses' mouth. We put bits in their mouth to control the dark. As, as powerful as a horse. It's called horse power. Yet, when you put bits in the mouth of the horse and you pull it, the whole body with the power is brought under control. That is how powerful the tongue is. Watch what you say. If you don't want to see it, don't say it. You shall have what you say. Christianity is called the great confession. The great confession. Eternity in hell or heaven is in the hand of your tongue. You know, words can also cause you to sin. Ephesians 4.29 Words can cause you to sin. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So words can corrupt people. Words can damage people. That's why as parents, your children will rise to what you say. Your children will rise to what you say. Learn not to say what you feel. Say what you believe. Learn not to say what you feel. Say what you believe. If you say what you believe, many relationships will be healthy. Don't say what you feel. Say what you believe. When your spouse gets you angry, don't say the anger. Say this relationship is working. This relationship is heaven on earth. We are the best couple earth ever produced. Our relationship is getting better every day. I am growing in understanding you and I can see that you too are understanding me. When you speak those words, irrespective of how you feel, you are creating what you are saying. Don't say what you feel. Say what you believe. Even when you are feeling it so strong, refuse to verbalize it. Don't say, stupid woman, I knew you were going to be my downfall. You are creating it. Say the best woman you are. The best woman you are. You are a blessing to my life. You are a prophet in my life. You are a builder in my life. I believe in you. When you are angry and you want to say stupid woman, say woman of God, the anointed of the almighty. You will only do me good and not evil all the days of my life. Jakataba. If you like, after you say it, run away. But make sure you speak it. Create the atmosphere. Lago Baja. The devil has no access to this family. This family is anointed. This is the house of God. In this house, prophets of the world are raised. Ministers of God, the greatest shakers of the planet are coming out of my loins. Yabadaga. Everything that comes out of me is a blessing. Everything that comes from me is a blessing. I am a plus to my world. I am an advantage to my generation. I am such a great influence of my generation. You speak it the way you want it. You see it the way you spoke it. Uh, you speak it the way you want it. You see it the way you spoke it. You shall have what you say. Somebody say, I am what the word says I am. Say it again. I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. I didn't hear a powerful amen. You see a mountain, don't describe it. Speak your desire on it. You feel sick, don't say the feeling. Say God's power is working in me now. Affecting and effecting healing and wholeness. Then that is faith speaking. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 
Every idle word that men speak, they shall give account. You know, we will give account of words. Because words mean a lot. Why do you think that the first action of God on earth, recorded by Moses, is God said? God said. The first action of man on the earth, as recorded by Moses, was that man said something. And the first action of Satan on earth was, what did God say? Word, words, words. Words, words, words. If you don't know what to say, shut up. Keep quiet. Proverbs 18, 20. Hey, I'm beginning to round up. Are you feeling what I'm feeling here? Proverbs 18, 20. Put it up quickly. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. If you're talking, your belly will be full. If you're quiet, you'll be hungry. Next verse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They are not in the hand of Satan. And they are not in the hand of God. They are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. He's talking about not saying things that would damage people. That means if words are powerful, mind what you say. Check what you say. If you have nothing to say that is of faith, shut up. Speak the word only and my servant shall be whole. He cast out the spirit with his words. Words have spiritual value. Proverbs 22 6. Words have spiritual value. Proverbs 22 verse 6. Put it up for me quickly. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. The Hebrew actually says, train up a child in the way of the mouth. In the way of the mouth. That is, the way to train up a child is by speaking words. Be dogged about what you say and say it confidently believing. It's either the word works or it works or it works or it works. That's the only way. It works or it works or it works. I want you to put a premium on the word that comes out of your mouth. You could tell your friends, I really don't have money, but God supplies my needs. Instead of saying I don't have money, and don't stop there. I really don't have money, but God supplies my needs. Nobody will beat you. God supplies my needs. Yeah. God supplies my... I feel a pain on my back. But the power of God is working in my body. Shakadaba. The power of God is working in my body. The power of God is working in my... Somebody say, let's be realistic. Uh -uh. In the faith, we are not realistic. Your reality is the word of God. Because if you are born again, you can be realistic. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't be realistic. Okay, you say God is your father, you can't be realistic because if they take you to the lab now to test you, the DNA will not be God's DNA in the physical. So a believer can't be realistic. The reality of the believer is the word of God. I am what God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. Say with me, my reality is the word of God. Say it again, my reality is the word of God. One more time, my reality is the word of God. I am what the word says I am. That is my reality. The power of God is at work in me right now. Every organ in my body is responding to the power of God. Every organ in my body is responding to the word of God. Every organ in my body is responding to the word of God. I thought I would have a powerful amen. amen. I give no room for fear or doubt. I give no room for unbelief in my words. Whatever you say here, keep saying it. I am healed. I may feel the pain, but I know I am healed. I may still be feeling the pain, but I know I am healed. My feeling is not my reality. The word of God is my reality. 
The word of God says, I'm healed, I'm healed. You keep speaking it. Speak it in the night. Speak it in the morning. Speak it in the afternoon. I believe in miracles. I thought somebody would shout that. I believe in miracles. I believe in the miracles of healing. I believe in the miracles of healing. I believe the power of God is working in my body, in my organs, in my circumstance, in my marriage, in my family. The power of God is working now, effecting healing in my body, my liver, my chest, my stomach, my kidneys, my back, my bones are healed right now. You say it always. Shout it, I am healed. The power of God is working in my body right now. I believe in miracles. Salvation is a miracle. The new birth is a miracle. Righteousness is a miracle. Sonship is a miracle. So I believe in miracles. I am healed. My body is strong. My body is healthy. My body is whole. I didn't hear powerful amen. Jaco Takaba. Zibala Doba. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Begin to do what healed people do. Begin to do what healed people do. Egabayo Nakata. Membrana Gaga. I am bought with a price. I am bought with a price. I am bought with a price. Therefore, I glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are God. Egabajokalana Matonaga. Eh. Miracles are happening all over this place. Watching online, miracles are happening right where you are. On radio, miracles are happening right in your house. On television, miracles are happening. Healing is taking place. Your bones are getting reconstructed. Your eyes are being restored. Your hearing is being created. Creative miracles. The power of God is at work in your organs. At work in your organs. Those breast lumps are vanishing. They are disappearing right now. Lakato, 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 lakato. Spinal cord conditions are being healed by the power of God. Jacoladaba. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray quickly for those of you on television. Those of you on radio, those of you watching online, I want to pray for you right now. Place your hand in any area of your body where there is, there is pain or discomfort or where there is a condition. And if you have sick people by you, put your hand on them. Be an extension of God's creative power. Lay hands on sick people around you. If you are in the hospital with a sick patient, lay hand on that sick patient. If you are in the house with somebody sick, put your hand on that person and tell him, get ready. The power of God is moving in your body now. And I'm going to pray right now. You put your hand right there. In the name of Jesus receive your healing now hey 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 receive your healing now take it take it take it take it the creative power of god is at work in your body the curative power is at work in your body receive receive miracles there's a suspension of the natural the supernatural is creating what was missing restoration Restoration, 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 restoration. Ayana, Ayana, Leia Toba Sakata. That's it from your head to your legs. God's power is flowing through your body from your head to your legs. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. In the name of Jesus. Jikatoba Yata. Now begin to do what you couldn't do before. Quickly. Wherever you are, in this building, online, on radio, on television, online, begin to do what you couldn't do before. Quickly. God's power is at work in your body. It's at work in your body. The disease in your lungs have just been healed. Somebody with intestinal disorders has just been healed. You have just been healed. Somebody with a knee condition has just been healed. Healings all over the place. Miracles are taking place. Miracles are taking place on your job, in your business, on your career, on your papers. Miracles are taking place all over the place. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Go ahead, do what you couldn't do before. 
Walk around that place and declare it. The power of God is at work in my body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. I know that there are miracles all over the world. If you're watching online or on radio, right now a miracle has just happened where you are. Give us a call and share with us. The number again is plus 234-803-275-6104. Plus 234-803-275-6104. Another number to call quickly is plus 234-806-800. 9939 plus 234-806-800-9939 if you're calling right now we're expecting to hear from all of you listening on radio watching on television online i tell you there are miracles happening here all over this place and quickly quickly we're going to do our own right in this building dr gabriel we can begin quickly organize all the people that needs ministration right now we're going to minister to them and wherever you're watching online we're going to be rounding you up the radio audience i'm going to be joining mr michael bush in the other in the other studio right now we'll answer a few of your questions and pray for you and if you need prayers also call those two numbers but if you have received a miracle just now call us we want to share your testimony and remember we are teaching every day we are committed to building you up in faith until your miracle is right in your hand. Every evening 6 p.m. GMT plus 1 and every afternoon 12 noon there's a teaching on Facebook on my page, Abel Danina Public Figure. There's a full teaching every afternoon on healing at 12 noon and in the evening at this time. You need to get more people get, get more people in the hospitals to hook up. God's healing power is more than available to heal deliver and set free. Listen to me. I want to take up your offerings quickly and I want to pray for everybody wherever you're watching around the world. We give in honor, we give in faith and we give in thanksgiving of what God has done. The banking details are scrolling on the screen for those that are giving online but it's a joy and an honor to serve you the grace of God. Father, as we give in faith tonight, we rejoice right now, right now. We rejoice that our offerings are a sweet smell before you and we thank you for the miracles of provision, favor, connection, creative doors, opportunities. They are released upon our audience all over the world. Creative miracles over their jobs. Those believing for papers, the papers are approved. Jobs are approved. Checks are signed. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. We celebrate the harvest of miracles, healing, signs and wonders. And we thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I look forward to having all of you tomorrow, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. And until then, remember, I'll be in the other studio with Mr. Michael Bush. You don't want to go away, radio, TV, and social media audience. We love you, and we will connect with you. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service tonight. Glory! Amen! Woo! I tell you, I'm excited tonight. Glory to God. Let go suck all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damina. Please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com. It is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity if you don't need healing someone around you definitely might need it this is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of god's word for healing don't forget god's word is god's medicine i prophesy as your amen will come like thunder you will swim in the miraculous Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date, 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time, Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily and on Sunday, first service, 8 a.m. and second service, 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 AM to 1 PM XL FM 106.9 Uyo 3 PM Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 PM to 5 PM 
Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Life Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino, and Instagram at Abel Damino. Watch real time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Damino. FCMB, there is Zenith and there is UBA on this edition of the program with the account name of Costain at Power City International. I'm going to start with UBA. So 139 26 465, 139 26 465, that's for UBA, Power City International. Zenith is 10 12 36 59 12. 10 12 36 59 12. Account name, Power City International, and the same for FCMB. 2982-68-2028, that's announcement number one. Quickly, quickly, announcement number two, and that is for sponsorship. You can call up uh, plus 234-803-275-6104, or you just send an email or two to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Remember, Dr. Abel Damina, the doctor is D-R. Okay, I think I'm set. Uh, even Global Baba himself is set. Okay, let me see whether I can just join our friends on, um, yeah, um, our friends on the social media. You know, as Global Baba always says, they, they make this program tick. They make this program what it is. Um, Dixon Maruza, I'd like to thank you. God is love. Tia I'd like to thank you. Pastor Msapaila Mubangawesu Oliver, I'd like to thank you. Enoekwa, I'd like to thank you too. There's Dixon Marusa again. I just mentioned that. Nachi Oko Chuku, that's what it is. And there is um, Chris Covenant, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Lost Cruz in Italy, I'd like to thank you more. Fidelia Adakue Dozie Mofebu is also there, and so to learn. Chisanda and Abu, uh, Abdu should be. And finally, 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 can I just take one or two now? There is uh, Busha Bayeso and um, Vivian Ochai. Global Bias here, help me, the world, to welcome this award winning author. He's written, um, you know, more, than, more, more books than you can count. Uh, very soon, Global Baba, your books are going to be uncountable, you know. So, and um, it's a, it, an international televangelist and somebody who teaches the Bible like no one else. Help me welcome Global Baba, Dr. Ebel Damina. The intercontinental Mr. Bush. So, so nice good to, to see, see you, Global see Baba. You again today. So nice, so nice. What a blessing. So nice. And then the church auditorium, you know, packed full. Yes. It's so nice to see that. The word of God. Everybody is learning. Everyone is yeah. uh, in haste. And they're learning. Yes. They're learning real good. Praise so um, holy, um, uh, I was going to say holy uh, global Baba, you know. <laughs> but yesterday, yes, you know, global Baba, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Every day you must drop. Yesterday you told us that uh, holiness is not about sinlessness. Yes. That holiness is being called out. Hagios, yes. the Greek word hagios, to be set apart. So, but we've been, been using it all along wrongly. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the problem with Bible teaching. Global, but why don't you just sit us down one day and just pack all those things that we've been doing wrongly and tell us one day, not today you drop <laughs> one, tomorrow. You know, because I don't understand. For instance, you said baptism. Yes. It could be an action. It could be something else. It could so, be teaching. Yes. We, we keep teaching it small, small, precept upon precept. That's the way it's taught. Okay. It's going to take a bit of time, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. Without any further ado, the Global Bar by yesterday... We ended, uh, it, would, it would seem mid-air, because yes. we're just doing anonymous, 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 and the time was up. So we'll start with some anonymous entries today. Please, see, it's where we headed next. Hello, our Father in the Lord. I'm Daniel. I write for me, Korobasi, Akwaibum State, Nigeria. I have a problem understanding the book of Matthew 24, 34. Please, Daddy, which generation was Jesus talking about in this verse? Thank you. Matthew 24, 34. Very I say unto you. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Again, when it says generation in the Bible, it's not generation today as you think or as you, you know, as you look at it like one generation, two generations. It was actually talking about the prophecies 
that were predicted about the things that were going to happen to him in his sufferings and in his resurrection. What he was actually saying is that those prophecies of his death, burial, and resurrection will happen within that space of time in which he was talking with them in the book of Matthew. Okay, so we finally out of Akwaibon. We headed to next door, River State, but I caught here we come. Hello, Global Baba. I am an addicted follower of your teachings, and I've been tremendously blessed by your exposition on the doctrine of Christ and new creation realities, which are gradually missing out in today's pulpit. However, Global Baba have concerns about your response to a question in today's, that is on the, was on the 27th of December 2020 program, uh, about altar calls, and more specifically, the confession of Christ as a conditional prere uh, prerequisite for salvation. I agree, Global Baba, perfectly with you when you responded that believing in Jesus Christ is a condition to be saved. However, I became slightly uncomfortable when you went further to really get the aspect of confessions. This contradicted my scriptural leanings as an evangelist, and I wouldn't mind to learn more from you and understand better in this regard. I'll continue to celebrate God's grace upon your life and ministry and hope to hear from you. Ambassador Basi Okorafo in Potako City. Well, Ambassador Basi, can you give me one scripture that says when you lead people to Christ, call them to the altar. If you can't find a scripture for it, that should start resetting your mind. That altar call is not a prerequisite for salvation. However, believing in Jesus, believing in Jesus is what is required to be saved. Now, I never said you shouldn't confess Christ. But again, confessing Christ is not just verbal. It's not just the talk. It begins from the heart. All right? It begins from the heart. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And then because he has believed in his heart and he has become righteous in his heart, the mouth expresses what took place in the heart. All right? So that's the way it works with salvation. Okay, so from Rivers, Global Baba, we're headed next to Abia. We have two entries there. One, this one is counseling. Can I take this uh, caller? Meanwhile, hello. Are you there? Okay, we make. Uh, hello. Okay, many thanks for joining us. Anyway, you're calling from one minute. Uh, please, my name is Pam Daniel. I'm screaming, I'm screaming from halfway ball. All right, go ahead, Pam. Go ahead. So, please, I want to make an inquiry. I want to make an Yeah, fire on. Uh, uh, please, this job of weakness, uh, I know that you know, all of us are Christians. Uh, then I want to make an inquiry because of say then you know, they celebrate Christmas and they don't use uh, this thing earrings and and this uh, uh, you know all these electronics and I don't know whether it's right <laughs> or not. How does that affect your work with Christ? Well, yeah. Pam, I think you should look for a Jehovah's Witness building somewhere. <laughs> Go there and ask them, why don't you? Because I'm not Jehovah's Witness, so I can't sure, answer that sure, question for you. Sure, sure. Let, let's, let's, Stay let's just, focused on Christ absolutely. and what Christ has done Absolutely. For you. That's more important. So, Abia State, here we come. Greetings to you, Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina, and the Intercontinental Michael Bush. May God Almighty always keep your household and you blessed as you continue all your good work. Please, sir. I am very challenged. I need your prayers and your counseling too. I'm in my final year of study, about to graduate, but it's been two years now. I've been dreaming where I see myself selling pure water, that's sachet water, and uh, also seeing myself in my primary school, that is in my dream. When I made inquiries about the dreams, my pastor said that it means limitations and backwardness, which I was told to be prayerful. But sir, sincerely have prayed many times, even made some sacrifices in churches, just to see that everything turns good. To no avail. Instead, the dreams keep coming back even more. I dream of it sometimes in the day, blah, 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 and sometimes at night. Please, I'm tired of going to church to make sacrifices. I'm paying money to raise prayer altars, and I'm confused. Please, what should I do? And please also pray for me, Thompson, in Abia State. This caller, hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Many thanks for joining us. You know where you're calling from. <clears throat> yeah, this is a give and take. I call it on the TV. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, Papa. Evening, bless you. 
Well, I think you're growing spiritually. That's the point. You have, you have grown beyond your church. So when you grow beyond the trouser, what do you do with the trouser? You either change the trouser or you, you mend the trouser. So it's one of the two. You either mend the church or you change the church. Global bar. Yes. That's speaking in parables too. <laughs> Is that not a parable, Global Baba? Okay, Jesus, Baba, let's Jesus go back. spoke in Paris. Absolutely. So, <laughs> Global Baba, let's get back to Thompson, um, the guy who's been dreaming about being in primary school or, you know, all the other things. And as you're praying, the dreams are increasing. Yeah, sure. So, it shows you that you're doing something wrong. Because if what you're doing is right, it shouldn't be increasing. So now, the first thing is, the reason why you're seeing all of those dreams is because you have made them important. <laughs> so because you have made them important, you're always thinking about it. And because you're thinking about it, you're dreaming it more. Because out of the multitude of your thoughts, the dreams are multiplying. The first thing to do is, first of all, tell yourself, I can never go back to my primary school. It's not even humanly possible. <laughs> Number two, tell yourself, I, I can never sell pure water. It's not even humanly possible because where I am right now, I am beyond where I can sell pure water for survival. Then tell yourself, I have Christ. Christ in me guarantees me a future. And I can tell you, you're in the wrong church. Look for a church where they will teach you Christ. Your real problem is that church where you're going. Because if your pastor tells you that because you drank pure water and old primary school, it is backwardness in your life. It means your pastor doesn't even know the scriptures and is not in the right place to lead you spiritually. So my advice, look for a church where Christ is preached. Because when you focus on Christ, those stupid dreams will disappear. That's my advice. Just in time, this next caller. Hello. Uh, good evening, Papa. Welcome evening. to the program, yes. Good evening, Papa. Evening. Uh, I want to thank you for what you have done. Because I've been in this program from the 60s of glory on the And we have a prayer program in the church. If I speak, if I speak, I just hear from you and you listen a lot. Is it I think it is or a, is it if I stop going to this or should I regard that I disobey the Because I enjoy this program I enjoy Okay, I understand. So because you're following what we're doing, mm. you are missing the prayer programs in your church. So no, no, no. You, is you, that what he said? No, he's saying he's, he enjoys this one more. And so it doesn't feel like, I think so. No, I think he says that? they're doing a prayer program in their okay, church. Okay. But because he enjoys, enjoys this program, this he, ditch, he, he puts off his church okay. own and mm. stays to follow this. So what does is he want us to do now? Well, the choice is yours. Mm. Where you are fed, that's where you stay. If we're feeding you and your church is not feeding you, stay here and keep eating. Because if you eat well and grow well, maybe one day you will be in a position to even help your church to pray better. So, that's bad. So, from uh, Abia, we still stay on Abia, Global Baba. He says, hello, Global Baba. I'm Chaplain Marcel from Abia State. I'm facing serious challenges in my business. I take a loan to grow my business, but nothing comes out every time, Global Baba. This has continued for too long and made things too difficult for me. What on earth is the matter, Global Baba? Well, the matter is that you need somebody who is an expert on financial advice to counsel you and help you, an expert in finances. Because you may be doing the wrong thing with the loans you're collecting. And you may have even no need for the loans. Maybe it's not even a loan you need. You just need good ideas and all of that. 
So talk to people who are experts in that field. I'm not an authority there. That's why I'm shying away from giving you counsel on that. My expertise is the word of God. Bless you. Global Baba. Global Baba. The intercontinental. Okay, from, from Abia, let's get to Benue. I says, dear Mr. Bush, my name is Samuel. I write from Benue State. Is there anything that God cannot forgive? Please put that question to Global Baba for me. Like belonging to one of the world's renowned occult organizations like Illuminati, free mercenary, etc. I understand their members surrender their souls to their gods. Can they retract and God accepts them or they are doomed for life? Well, there's no sin that God cannot forgive. Jesus died to save everybody. So if a man is in Illuminati or in a cult somewhere where he has vowed his soul to the devil, all he needs is the preaching of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And if he accepts the gospel, he'll be free from all of those affiliations. From Benue State, we go to next door, Nasarawa State. First door, this caller. Hello. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the program. You know where you're calling from? I'm coming. I'm calling from Murrieta. My name is Miracle. Miracle again. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. I, I have one that question. Fire on. Yes, sir. Um, Jesus said. Jesus said about this about the first first prophet that after the first prophet speech that um, rapture will not take place in that generation passes. What does that mean? And the generation has passed. And rapture will not take place. You are reading your Bible upside down. You are not reading it well. Because what you are trying to say is that Jesus lied. And it is not Jesus, it's you that is wrong. Because you are not reading well. So my advice for you, Miracle, carry that scripture where you read. Read from the beginning of that chapter. Read the whole chapter. Read the whole book. Read Matthew 1 to the end. When you finish the whole book, if you are really serious, then come back to that chapter 24 and read the previous verses and the verses after. If you still do not understand my advice, order for my book, The Last Days. The Last Days did a lot of justice on Matthew 24. It will give you verse by verse exegesis explaining the whole concept for you to understand. Bless you. Miracle in Oweri, you are our last caller on this edition of the program, just as we... Make way from Benue into Nasarawa State. My name is Reverend Elisha Nzunde Shamaki. I'm watching from Masaka. Okay, Masaka is actually in Karu, local government area of Nasarawa State. The first time I stumbled on KLN, I concluded, Global Baba, that the Lord is using you, Dr. Ebel Damina, and other men of God to bring the gospel raw without compromise to our generation. Since then, I've decided to stay tuned to the channel. Now I know deliverance is not a prayer, but a preacher. There is nothing like deliverance ministry or service. God bless you, and please keep up the good work. Shalom. Amen. Thank you for reaching out. We love you. Stay with us and keep watching. We're hitting out of, our, out of Nigeria and into other parts of Africa by road. Ghana, here we come. Hi, Dr. Damina. My name is Richmond Mills from why, Ghana. Why by road? Yeah, because... <laughs> That's, that's, that's a very good question. And I need to explain, you know, um, from Nasarawa, there's no, there's no airport, okay, you know, okay. so we, we must go by road. Okay, okay. We must go by road. That's a All long right. drive. All right. <laughs> you know, you know, Global Bar, I'm the pilot. You know, I know, I know. So I, I, I look at everywhere. I'm with you. I'm so with sometimes you. we go by road, sometimes we go by, by water. Air, so sometimes, sure. yeah. Okay. So I listened to your teaching on Facebook, Global Bar, Bar on Facebook Live a few weeks ago, and you said God does not promise long life. I read in the book of First Kings 3, 1 to 15, that after King Solomon had made a thousand burnt offering unto God, he appeared to him in his dream and asked him to request for anything he wanted, and he, and he would answer. Solomon requested for wisdom to rule God's people. In verse 14, Global Baba, to be precise, God said, And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. Is it guaranteed that if man keeps the commandments of God, there is an assurance of long days on earth? I pray for response immediately. There's a difference between long life and lengthening of your days. They are not the same. So, uh, you need to go and study. Find out what does it mean to lengthen a day and what it means to live long. They are not the same. A lengthened day means God will make your days very, very productive. When you have a lengthened day, that means what somebody uses 10 years to do, you achieved it within 24 hours. That is God lengthening your day. 
Okay, uh, Global Baba from Ghana, we're hurrying to Zambia, who could be flying now. It says, hello, Global Baba, there is a search which only ends when Christ is revealed to you. For me, immediately, I listened to Global Baba in 2016. My spirit suddenly agreed with him that what he is teaching is the truth of the gospel. Since then, I have not missed Global Baba's teachings because in Christ I have arrived home. I'm Leonard from Kitwe, Zambia. Bless you, Leonard. We're glad to have and know that you're growing. Still from Zambia, Pastor Chilungu writes, I'm one of your students in the ongoing mentorship program, Global Baba. I really need your counseling on our marriage, for we got divorced, but we want to come back together. And this can only take place when we go through your counseling. Thank you, Global Baba. Greetings from my family and me and the entire Everlasting Joy Church in Zambia. Wow, praise the Lord. Congratulations. We'll be willing to counsel with you and your wife so you can reconcile and come back together and serve God and fulfill God's purpose together. We rejoice with the step you're already taking. Global Baba, let's go to Rwanda next. Quickly, quickly, it's Fred. Fred writes from Rwanda. What's the meaning, Global Baba, of if you don't get hot or cold, I would vomit you in Revelation 3.16. Does this refer to loss of salvation? No, it refers to, it refers to a mixture of law and grace. That's what it refers to, a mixture. You are neither hot nor cold. You are neither in grace or in law. You are mixing it. So you make up your mind whether you want to go to law or you want to go to the finished work of Christ. He was dealing with doctrinal issues in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Global Baba, we are um, spending the night um, in South Africa. This one says, hello, Global Baba. I recently started to follow your teachings on Facebook. Thank you for the truth of God's Bible teachings. Are women allowed to preach or not? I've read 1 Timothy 2, 12, and 1 Corinthians, and um, I'm getting confused with John 4, the Samaritan woman and Mary Magdalene, whom Jesus charged with responsibility at resurrection. This is Kibakile Muleti in uh, Bluefontein, South Africa. Well, I'm glad you are interrogating more. And as you keep interrogating, you will also find where it says, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Prophecy is the preaching of the gospel. So, when you see where the Bible says women should keep quiet in the church, Brother Paul was dealing with husband and wife relationship, pointing the woman back to the place of submission. That's all it means. It does not affect women preaching and fulfilling ministry. That's why the woman who still had four husbands, Jesus allowed her to go and bring a whole city to him. He didn't tell her, go and send your husbands away first before you preach. Okay, so, as you grow, as you keep following you will understand that God wants every man, every woman to preach the gospel because in the spirit, there is no male, there is no female. It's the same Holy Spirit in a man and a woman. And we're all mandated to go to the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. No, Baba, we must go because time says so. But before we go, we could just take one long minute and um, dwell on some prayer requests. We have a number of prayer requests. Sometimes some people um, talking concerning business, yep. others about their health, others about their marriage, marriage and all of that. Father, we rejoice because of the opportunity we have to demand and to receive on behalf of everyone who are sending a prayer request. We speak healing to those who are in need of healing. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We speak marital favors, supernatural connections, and marital breakthroughs for those in need of husbands or wives. In the name of Jesus, Amen. receive that miracle. We pray for women in need of fruit of the womb. We declare a miracle. In the name of Jesus, Amen. receive the fruit of the womb in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for students who are seeking admission. The favor of God is upon you and we command that supernaturally you receive help and assistance to be admitted in those schools in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, generally we decree and declare right now the expectations of your people granted are released. Amen. Receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Global Baba, we must Praise go. God. This is Michael Bush inviting Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina, to take us home on this edition of the program. Intercontinental, Mr. Bush, I tell you, it's beginning again, and we're so excited to have all of you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. And don't forget to follow our radio broadcast. They continue tonight at uh, 9 to 10 on Inspiration, 10 to 12 on Heritage. Tomorrow morning, 11 to 1 o'clock, Radio Acquire Bomb, 1 to 3, XLFM, 3 to 5, you know, UFM. And we're back here again, on 6 comfort. p.m. on Comfort FM. We love you guys. Enjoy the grace of Jesus and keep growing in the knowledge of Christ. Till we connect again tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT plus 1. Be blessed.
Good night. Amen. Bye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Amen.